All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you're rolling with the Alpaca 2-Niner. It is a lovely Wednesday evening, a little on the windy side. A uh, little birdie tells me that our weather is supposed to kind of hit the fan by Friday or Saturday. Supposedly, we're getting, we're taking a dive back down to cold temperatures and a mixture of rain and snow, which, oh well, that's Alberta for you. <clears throat> Anyways, so tonight we're going to talk a little bit about hand filing a key, but not using the impressioning method. Um, impressioning is a bit more of a of a of an art. This is actually the easy way to do it, and also kind of assumes that you have the lock and you're able to completely disassemble it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I've done this for a few locks that I have, some vintage ones with uh, oddball keyways that when I got them, they weren't keyed and I just wanted them to be keyed. And uh, the best way to do that was to back shim the lock and just uh, uh, file a key uh, one pin at a time. So, and... It's, it's not really a, a super difficult process. It's more of a, a dexterity and precision thing and, and taking your time and not making, you know, dr very dramatic changes. Uh, this does require a degree of precision and a meticulous nature. Um, believe me, I've screwed up a few keys. I've got probably five or six that I've had to waste because well i just i went a little bit too hardcore i have obviously gotten a bit better and uh i quite like the last few keys that i hand filed so we're not uh like i said we're this is not rocket science uh this is uh fairly simple again it, it kind of more depends upon just being careful and meticulous as opposed to high tech and and you know having some crazy mutant superpower and all we really need for this is uh obviously the the regular lock tools that you would have anyways some shims uh a plug follower and you know a nice pair of tweezers etc cetera, etc cetera. but for hand filing the key all i really have is one of these uh sharpie ultra fine points i really like using these uh these have always uh, done a really good job and you'll you'll see where this is useful in a minute and uh, a basic set of diamond files uh for hand filing the keys themselves i mostly use this triangular file and the oh hey get back in there get back in there and the square file uh, I have on occasion for different reasons used the other files, but it's mostly the triangular file and the uh, square file. Now, uh, <clears throat> oh, I have right here um, two of the same kind of lock, and these locks are courtesy of Wes Poole in the UK. So shout out to Wes. He's a pretty cool guy. You should check out his needle picks. Um, this one, I've already done the process of, of uh, back shimming it and hand filing a key for it. You can see it right there. That's actually not bad. Not bad at all. It certainly does work. All right. And we have its brother lock right there. It's already been taken apart. There's the body. And guts are just sitting down here. And I have already uh, done one pin. You can just sort of see, and it's a, it's a really low cut. And it might even be a tiny bit too low, but that's okay. This lock is pretty worn, and the driver pins have some rounding on them. So there is a bit of tolerance. Uh, certainly, if it's a cheap lock with really loose tolerance, uh, you can get away with a bit more than, say, a very well-manufactured lock with very tight tolerances. 
Um, I have a couple of, uh, uh, like I have a hand filed Sargent that I did and it's a really, uh, well-built core, uh, with tight tolerances and my filing had to be on point. And that's actually one of the first keys that I completely screwed up and had to do it over again. So that was, you know, and <clears throat> fortunately keys aren't really that expensive and I can often get blanks for free if I talk to the right people. So enough said about that. So, and this is where the marker comes in. Uh, and we already have one pin, uh, done with this one. So we'll just move on to the, the second chamber here. Now I know this won't show up perfectly on the video, but I like to, and before I was actually using a, a small automatic center punch, but that kind of deformed the key too much uh when it made its mark and uh resulted in the key often getting stuck inside the kiwi so i switched over to this marker because it's a little little less destructive and actually just overall does does a better job for this so what i did is i just stuck that fine point down there and i made a, le a mark on the key which you can see there and the camera shows up and I always check afterwards to see if, okay, is this uh, right on center? Is it a little off to the left, a little off to the right? And I can just adjust the filing, uh, you know, for that. So again, it's just a matter of precision and uh, keeping your eyes open and being meticulous. So we'll, we got the, the second pin, the second key pin. And just pop that guy in there and that wow that's not working i am a little coffeeed up right now i had to get coffeeed up to do this i needed a boost right so and we can see that of course it's a blank so the key this key the second key pin is going to sit up a bit and that sort of gives me an idea too of how much i have to file so and like i said earlier we don't want to make uh great uh, enormous dramatics, you know, you're not going to sit there and, and lean on your file for five minutes and discover that you made too much of a cut. It's actually better to, you know, make a hundred little ones and, that add up to, uh, perfection than make two big ones that add up to a fuck up. So I'm satisfied with, uh, where the line is where the little marker is on on the key i'm satisfied that's pretty much dead on center or close enough uh for this and i like to start with the triangle file because it's got a nice it's got uh obviously a nice sharp edge and so and i also would normally hold my I'm holding it differently so uh, you can see it on the camera I actually usually have it up on a uh, the rubberized handle of a large pair of pliers just as sort of a tool rest and I'll start completely flat right about where that line is and I'll just ever so gently start to file into that line while rotating the triangular pick until the flat side is, is facing up and nice and parallel to the back side of the key. Or not the back side, sorry, the, the, the cut side. And just give that a little file, and this is actually going to, to start the cut for when I start using the square file. So it kind of makes sense to start this off as accurately as possible. Now, because I'm not making huge dramatic cuts in this, I still have a, if, if the cuts off a little tiny bit, I still have a little bit of time to alter it a little bit. And that comes into, to more, you know, like being experienced with your files and knowing what you can get out of them. So I know that this, if this is just a tiny bit off, once I switch over to the square file, I can, I can usually kind of move it over just a tiny bit as I file down. But remember, you may not have a lot of, of um, depending on how long the pin is. I mean, if it's a, if it's a very deep cut, you do have more uh, playroom than, say, a cut like this where it's, it's barely a millimeter 
uh, cut and it's, it's a barely a millimeter deep here. So and this one isn't going to be much deeper. So remember that when you uh, um, go to make your cuts is that you got you know very limited room to play around here. So when you uh, go to make your filings and your cuts, uh, you know, be very sure that that's where you, what you want to do and where you want to go with that. Because it's very, very easy to screw these up. Oh, no! <laughs> Sorry about that. I just, I kind of bumped into everything and... Everything went all haywire on me. So uh, we're going to pause for a sec. And I'm going to file the rest of this. And uh, we'll see where we're at. So uh, hang tough. It'll be like a blink of an eye for you guys. But like five or so minutes for me. All right. So we've uh, mostly got chamber number two done you can see it's sitting there and it's yeah it's looking pretty good now one way you can uh test because it may look like it's pretty close but if it's sitting too high at all it has a tendency of jamming so a good way to check for this is to kind of slide the body on there and try to jack the key up you want the key sitting high up uh very high up in the keyway when you when you uh check to see how good your filings are right and we'll slide it into the body there and push the key up make sure it sits nice and high in the keyway and you'll actually be able to, to feel the pins kind of rubbing up against the chamber, I, I guess, is the word. And if the pin is sitting too high, it'll stick. It'll, it'll like stick right there. And I can feel that. I think it's, you know, it's definitely pin number two. Because uh, pin number one did not do this at all. It's just rubbing ever so slightly. So... This could definitely use just the tiniest bit more. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Just a tiny, tiny bit. And we'll just seat that in there carefully. And I gotta, I'm, I'm definitely holding this out of position. So I gotta be uh, very, very careful with this. And just give that a little bit more. Yeah, that feels so much better. Yeah, just a little tiny bit. So, all right, we'll set that up there. I think we're done with uh, chamber number two. So I guess you would, uh, you know, repeat this um, <clears throat> for as many pins as you have in the lock. This, uh, this lock has all six pins. It'll be tough getting the last cut for this key, but it's a, uh, or for this, but it's a very low cut, so it's not a lot of filing. So I, I'm thinking that shouldn't be a problem because this key was definitely uh, meant for uh, five cuts. But I think we might be able to get away with this. Well, we got away with it on the other one. And ultimately, you will... Uh, You'll end up with uh, something that looks like this. It definitely uh, won't have uh, flat bottoms. I guess you could uh, file flat bottom cuts into it, but that seems like a, a whole uh, huge uh, more work, like a, a larger amount of work uh, in order to have more things that could go wrong. So it, it just, it totally made sense to me to just do the majority of the cuts, right? Like use the triangular file to start the cut and then finish it off with the square file. And uh, it seems to have worked. I've, uh, I've probably filed like two dozen keys 
and I, I keep getting a little bit better with every key that I file. Uh, one thing that I want to learn soon is hand filing a key from impressioning. It's not something that I've really gotten into yet. Um, I do kind of want to uh, uh, perfect my filing skills, so I'm very proficient at it. And I'm kind of, and I, I am getting there. I'm definitely getting there. There's a lot of progress in, in that department. So yeah, that's, that's basically my method of, of uh, marking and, and hand filing keys the easy way. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead. I, I've got a nice uh, hot cup of coffee here that I should maybe be drinking before it gets cold. And uh, I'm gonna finish this key up, and that'll burn off the evening. Uh, shout out to all my locksmithing people out there, and locksport buddies, and county sheepdog, and everybody else that uh, tunes into my channel to see these boring ass videos. Uh, take care out there, be safe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye now.